Hey guys, Billy Jenkins here with Silver Creek Doodles. Today I'm going to unbox the dog training collar. So we will be unboxing the training collar today. Um, the company sent this to me to see if I would do an unbox for them and I'm super excited because I am totally pro correction collars, either if it's just beep, vibrate, or shock, or all three. Um, I definitely am not against shock because some dogs are, if depending on like a lab, every dog is different. So you have to make sure that each dog gets the type of training they need. Um, but some dogs need the shock and we'll go, we'll get to that once we turn it on and, and do the shock part of it. But let's go ahead and unbox. All right, so here we go. All right, so please watch the instruction video before using the dog training collar and they have the, the little code here thing for your phone. It's super good, that's the first thing you see when you open it. Um, all right, let's see. So we also have the remote, which I asked the company to send me a black one. Um, they have a, I think the other one is white and I'm super glad they sent me the black because this is what I like. Um, all right, so here's the collar. Here is, I guess, like a, one of these where it can go on so you can um, hold the remote either by your hand or somehow. So that's pretty cool that you have like a little tether for that. All right. So it looks like in here that we've got some extra prongs. I bet they're a different size than the others because they should have sent long and um, on the shorter side. The longer ones are for dogs with long hair because it needs to reach the skin further. The other shorter ones can be like for labs because it, you don't have to reach as far. And then also the rubber parts. And then this thing too is to see if the shock is working. So we will look at that. All right, so here is a lightning cable. Let me see. All right, so here's a charging port. Obviously it says charging on it too. So that is pretty good. And then there's a charging port. So two different things, one charger. Um, I'm sure that you have one of these around. It would have been nice to have sent two so you can charge both things at one time. But I'm sure you have them, but um, we've got one in here you could do them at different times if you don't. Uh, so here's also an information for the user guide. So this is the brand and company information. I do know that um, you can also get a warranty on this collar, so that's really nice. So you have to sign up for that. So here is an instruction book which I highly recommend to read it. Um, I have used shock collars before, so I, I definitely know the gist of it, but we'll have to read through. Here's also instructions of how to wear. Also, it's waterproof, so that is actually really cool. All right, so since we have everything unpacked, let's go ahead and look at all this stuff. And kind of go over some of it, okay. So, like I said, we've got the instruction manual. I definitely recommend to read it. Um, I've looked a lot online and read everything before doing this, so I, I pretty much know, I've watched it online, and, and of course you can do the same thing, but I would definitely take a minute to read that. All right, so let's look at the collar. So, starting out, let's go ahead, both of these have power buttons. So, and this also is something that's really cool. Do you see the lock right there? So we're gonna unlock it. So you have to pull it down. So that's really nice. So if you're putting this in your pocket, you don't have to worry about thinking you're gonna shock your dog or try to correct your dog if, you know, not on purpose. So that's really cool. So let's hold the power button down. There you go. So there is the power. So it looks like that we have it set on eight. The collar is not on because there would show the battery and then it, we've got full battery on the remote. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, and I'll go over the rest of that stuff in just a second. Let's get it connected to this. So here's the power button. So we're gonna hold it down. I'm gonna show you the front, because it'll turn a color. All right, so it just vibrated too and it turned green. So that's pretty cool. So that means it's turned on. So let me see really quick. Okay, so you can see right here, the collar is already connected. So I did watch online though, that you can see this dog up in the top corner. I'm gonna hit the, it's a channel, channel button. So there's two other dogs and there's no collar battery at the bottom. So that means that those aren't connected. And then there's the battery for the first one. So this remote can actually hold three, um, collars on it, which is really cool because if you have three dogs, now I would not recommend to try to train three dogs with only one remote and by yourself. Like if your dogs are out running and you know, you're trying to, you don't want to crack the wrong dog if that, if, if that makes sense, but it is nice to have one remote. You can keep charged. If you want to take one dog out at a time and, and you know, turn that collar on and then it's connected and you can, you can see it, just make sure it's the right collar. But that is really cool that one remote can have three collars connected to it. So a way to connect a new collar. So let's go ahead and I, I seen online what you could do. So you're supposed to hold the power button down for longer than um, it just turned off. So what I'm gonna do is it vibrated and turned green and then shut off. So now I'm gonna hold it longer. Let's see what it does. All right, so you heard it beep. And you see it's flashing blue. And then if you click this M on the side, it connected it. So that's how you, if you hold the power button down for much longer until it beeps and starts um, blinking blue, and then hit that M, it connects it together. So that's how you do that. Here is also a button. You can see it's got a light on it. So you can see here. And what I did is I just clicked it and it's actually, it's blinking. Can you see it blinking? Yeah. So I guess if you're out at night and you want it to blink, you can just turn that light on and it blinks. And then just hit the power button one more time and it goes off. Okay, so we've got shock here and vibrate and um, beep. So I just hit the beep. And then if you, so the vibrate, I'm gonna put it to, this is the camera is sitting on a box so you might can hear it, but did you hear that? Um, and then, so it goes up to eight. Now let's go down to one and let's hear what, it sounds like it's like <laughs> compared to when it's up so it's very low even the vibrate you can you can do different frequency or different strength so it's low so one to eight and then you get up to eight and it vibrates mm -hmm. so now we are gonna go to the shop I know I might get some bad feedback on my page about wanting to do shock collars on my dogs and I believe in bark collars to shock them, to teach them to not bark. And I do believe in shocking to dogs that are very sturdy and have a hard head. So we'll do it. You know, anything that I think you should do to your dog, you should do to yourself first. So um, we'll, we'll do this. So I will put this to my hand in, sh in, in shock and we'll start at one and then go up two every time until it, until it starts getting strong. I did read that the shock is from one to 18. So that's quite a big difference. Um, I will think that you probably don't need to go over 10 for small dogs, like 30 pound dogs, but like labs and stuff might need the 18. It's just, you know, when you've got bigger, hardier dogs that are hard headed, you might have to have something that's gonna get their attention more. Now remember that the shock is not used for punishment and it's not used to hurt them. It's used to get their attention and for correction. So a shock collar is electricity. So when you go to the doctor and you've got 
10 step muscles or you have to or they sign you a tinge unit it's the same thing so i know before i've had a tinge unit on my back or i've had it actually on my wrist because i had carpal tunnel stuff going on so i know what a tinge unit feels like this is the same thing obviously it can get much stronger so you don't want to do really high i know like on the tinge unit i could do it and it would do this every time I did it and that was and it didn't feel good it was actually it was doing its job but it was very strong and this is going to be the same thing it's the same type of electricity it's like a tinge unit so it don't don't be completely against it because it, it definitely is to get their attention not to hurt them but to get their attention okay so let's see all right so I hit mode to go up to the shock and right now it's on seven so let's go to four we'll start with four and it does beep at the same time so that kind of helps you so you'll know that i'm doing it and i will make sure there's indentions in my hand where i'm holding on to this so you'll see i'm not faking it <laughs> um all right so we're on four you see the shock one right here i'm just gonna have my finger on this yep Okay, so four wasn't that bad. It was just a little bit of ele electricity ran up through my fingers. Not that bad. So let's go to six. Okay, <laughs> more electricity. It went to my, my pinky at that time. So we're definitely getting more. All right, eight. Definitely more. So definitely more of a bite for sure on that one. Um, but... <laughs> I grew up on a farm and if you've ever touched an electric fence, it's way more than that. So um, we're gonna go up to eight. Okay, so definitely even the same spot and it up my middle finger, it, it definitely gave me some tingling for sure. So 12. All right, so same thing, definitely to that fingertip, it, it got me. Now I will do to 18 just because I want to show you guys it's not that bad. But, you know, if you think, like, I wouldn't want to do my dog over 12, probably 10, um, just because I, not that I, not even that it is mean, but I, I think that more, or I think that less than that will be able to get their attention. So I, I wouldn't want to go over 10 for my dogs. So let's go to 12. <laughs> if you see my, my thumb kind of twitch. All right, so... We're gonna have two more, so this is 16. All right, and you can see where I've got the indentions in here, so I'm definitely holding it. All right, 16. Okay, not that, I mean, yes, but it's not that bad. So, um, but definitely enough to get their attention. This would be good for my labs. All right, 18 is the highest, okay? Ready? <laughs> okay, so definitely all through these fingers. So it's kind of funny it, it being all in the same place. It's like the first in the beginning, just these fingers tingled as it got stronger. This one tingled. And then as it got a little bit stronger, these got strong, these got more. And then at 18, all the fingers were like, but it's like I said, it's like a tinge unit. So if you're going to use something on your dog, I recommend to do it on yourself obviously i just did it it's not that bad it's not like it's lighting lighting them up but now i wouldn't use this on a dog i wouldn't use that on a dog under 20 pounds on that strength i could use everything else the shock the vibrate and maybe eight and under but i wouldn't go above eight probably on a small dog and i definitely wouldn't use this in general on like a chihuahua or york or anything like that you can definitely for one it's too big but for two it's just you know they're they're too small anyways so this right here is also if you don't want to, if you don't want to test yourself like i just did then you're able to put this on here and it should light up when you press it all right all right so i'm gonna set it on six because i'd be fine with with doing any of my dogs on six if I accidentally did it. Um, actually, let's just do two. Um, all right, I'm hitting the shock. Yep, so you heard it beep and watch. You see this right here? I don't know if you can see the light. 
Yeah. So it also, it lights up right here and it beeps. So this lets you know that it's working. So I'm super excited to use these for our dogs. I know being a breeder um, and, you know, having dogs and with taking our dogs places, um, we have dogs in and out that are boarding our dogs, like our, do our breeder dogs and stuff like that, plus our dogs. And we need our household calm and collected and everybody definitely gets the attention they need and they're out with us but if we have to put somebody up or we're raising a litter we if we need to crate somebody or do something like that and we need to use these collars for correction um you know we we need to make sure that we have a good product and i believe this is it so i appreciate um you know, this company right here, and of course the link will be down below, but I appreciate this company much with sending this out, letting us try it. Um, I love it. So thanks again. And um, if you're interested in my dogs, you have any, you know, question for me, you can leave a comment. If there's any rude comments or stuff like that, it will be deleted and you will be removed from my page. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Definitely, if you're interested in using something like this, try them out. I think this is one to do. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.